Hey guys, thanks for coming back. This weekend I saw Oz the Great and Powerful, starring James Franco, Mia Kunis, Rachel Wise, and Michelle Williams. This is with a K review. I'm Victor the Great and Powerful. <laughs> kind of short, stubby, and single. Let's get to it. So there was a lot of speculation about this movie and how it was going to turn out. There were a lot of directors that really wanted to make the movie a sequel, and there were also a lot of directors that wanted to see it made into a musical. However, Disney still had a major problem with actually making this movie in the first place because Warner Brothers, who made the first 1939 film, they actually owned all the copyrights to the film, and they didn't want to give any of it up to Disney. Just as a side note here, the copyright laws actually extended to the color of the witch's skin, the use of the flying monkeys, and her signature mole. Now when I heard that I was like, what? Come on Disney, you just bought Star Wars for like a billion dollars. Come on man, just, you know, resistance is futile and so forth. So the witch in the movie doesn't actually have the mole and she's actually painted a theostine green and the flying monkeys in the movie were actually subbed out to be flying baboons, which are still scary, but when you think about it, it's better than subbing in flying hippos or fry breathing cats. Right? I could still see the cats. So to make this movie, Disney decided to base it more on the eight books written by L. Frank Baum in the 1900s. And if you look in the wiki link below, you'll find out that these books were way darker. And since they're part of the public domain, Disney was able to use them. Now, since this movie was rated PG and it's underneath the Disney banner, I think a lot of people, including myself, were wondering if the movie was actually going to go into the darker areas of L. Frank Baum's books. And Disney has been doing this over the years, especially with the Pirates of the Caribbean and also John Carter of Mars. Now, John Carter of Mars, of course, that was a terrible movie and it didn't do very good in theaters, but the action scenes in the movie were a lot darker as well as the story. In the movie, Oz is played by James Franco and he's kind of a magician and he's a con man and he's a womanizer and I think this is going to throw things off for people just a little bit, but his character is actually way closer to the L. Frank Baum's books. Now, for the most part, I really enjoyed the first half of this movie. You had Oz going to the world of Oz and meeting the Finley the Flying Monkey, who is voiced by Zach Braff and actually did a really good job with that and he also meets this little China doll girl that in a destroyed village. Even though there's a lot of interaction between Finley and Oz, it's really the China doll voiced by Joey King that brings a lot of surprising depth and emotion into the movie. And if you want, please check out her link below. So in this movie, Oz goes through a type of redemption story. He has to decide whether he wants to be the hero of the people or he just wants to take their gold and get a little bit of, you know, something something from Mio Kunis who plays Theodora. Now, after the halfway point in this movie, I kind of felt like the dialogue between the characters kind of changed, and I really wasn't buying into a lot of their character development. A lot of times, Franco kind of felt like he was into the role, and then he kind of fell out of it. And the same thing was with Kunis. I kind of felt like she did a really good job as Theodora, but then other times, she really felt like the overly attached girlfriend. And maybe it was because of the PG rating that they slapped on it, or maybe it was just because they weren't trying to make the movie too dark so they could make it for a wider audience. But in the end, I was about half and half on about actually buying into the characters of Oz, Theodora, and the rest of the witches. The best way that I can describe this movie is that it was actually really held back by its PG rating and that it wasn't as dark as it could have been. But the movie was actually still entertaining and I actually did enjoy seeing this movie on the big screen. So I'm actually going to give this movie a 3K review. I'm going to recommend that you guys go see this as a matinee and also rent it when it comes out. And when it comes on your streaming, make sure to pop it in the top 10. Thanks guys for watching my show and I really appreciate all the viewers and subscribers that I have. And remember, never forget my pretties. If you don't like what you're watching, is that a leprechaun voice? Oh my God. If you don't like what you're watching, turn it off. I better do this really quick before I keep talking.